Okay, so welcome, Let no, and uh, we're here in the second part of um, Unit Five. So, pawa naman si bahaging ito. We're going to talk about a pair of novels, no, na gagawin natin isa na lang yung discussion since um, they are under the similar content with it, no, or universe. So, we're going to talk about uh, Noli and Elfili. Ang objectives natin ay appraise important characters in the novel and what they represent, examine the present Philippine situation through the examples mentioned in Noli, and value the role of the youth in the development of future development and future of society. So kumuha ulit ako ng quote no at ang aking napili ay um, mula sa aking paboritong character na si Philosopher Tasho. Sinabi niya, ang pagdating ng bagyo ang tangi kong pag-asa sapagkat ito ang magdadala ng mga lintik na siyang papatay sa mga tao at susunog sa mga kabahayan. Sana magkaroon din ng dilubyo sapagkat may sampung taon na ngayon. Isinwestyon ko sa bawat kapitan ng pagbili nila ng tagahuli ng kidlat o pagpaparayos, ngunit ako'y pinagtatawanan lamang ng lahat. I love this part kasi it was one of the hardest um, figurative speech that um, I had to um, find out no? the meaning when I was in high school. Um, I remember that this was during my third year in high school ano, na we studied Noli and uh, yung panghuli ng kidlat, yung isa sa mga bagay o so, bakit hindi ako makatulog. So, dito natin makikita na Pilosopotasio really deserves um, the moniker no? or the other name that Rizal gave him. So, unahin natin ang Noli. Yan. So, fast facts, no? Uh, ito yung kauna-unahang nobela ni Rizal, kung saan sa English um, version no? na titled Social Cancer, uh, it accurately, accurately cap captures yung, yung point ni Rizal na he likened the problems of the society to a malignant cancer that grows and grows no? until it becomes unstoppable. During this time, no? Rizal is already facing a lot of financial difficulties kasi uh, may, may issues sa kalamba, may, may gulo na sa kanilang family, no? And uh, yung pagpapublish ay hindi naman po biyo, no? Na gastusin. Kung kaya, salamat, no? Sa kanyang kaibigan na si Maximo Viola, uh, siya ay pinaloan, no? Pinautang muna upang maipublish ito. So, ito yung kanyang major output mula nung siya yung mag aral sa Espanya. So, um, dito natin makikita na multitasker talaga si Rizal. Ano? At um, after being able to study two, um, two tawag dito, programs, no? take two programs, no? medicine and arts and letters, nagawa niya pang sumulat ng novel. Yan. So, yung characters, uh, he made them to represent realities about social groups in the Philippines and placed them in context similar to the social issues of that time. So, in-embody niya no, yung mga, mga posibleng maging tauhan sa isang totoong setup. Ngunit, sa isang banda, no, isang analysis mula kay Father John Schumacher, ang nagsasabi na yung nobela ay hindi lamang representation. No? It was an attack. Attack not only to the Spaniards but to the Filipino society itself. So, yung pag niya ay equal. No? Equal sa Castilla, equal sa mga Pilipino. At uh, sinabi ni Father Schumacher na uh, kanyang uh, uh, or si Rizal ay pinangalanan itong Touch Me Not or No Limitang Hiri um, dahil uh, yung cancer no ay uh, may uri na ganito yung pangalan no hindi mo siya pwedeng hawakan dahil napakasakit so ang 
ang intention dito ni Rizal ay hanapin, kapain ano yung mga cancer na maaring maging sanhe ng mas malaki at mas matagalang problema para sa mga Pilipino sa aspektong panglipunan. So, alam ko naman na familiar ng lahat ano, sa noli, sa premise nito, no? At uh, napakagandang tingnan na yung characters nito, no, ay very representational, no? Ilan sa mga notable characters, syempre si Kusosto Maibara na reflection ng isang um, middle class ano, na nakapag-aral at uh, uh, nagkaroon ng oportunidad, ng privilege na matuto sa Europa. No? At, uh, uh, nagkaroon siya ng uh, personal problems pag uwi niya ng Pilipinas. And these problems push him to, to become a different person. Now yan si Maria Clara, no? embodiment ng uh, ideal Filipina no? during the Spanish period. Uh, meek, hindi lumalaban, submissive, no? at uh, uh, maaring produkto din ng isang pagkakamali. Okay. Okay. Now yan si Padre Damaso na perfect na representation no? ng uh, mapangabusong trile. No? Si Sisa, Crispin at Basilio, Ayan. si Doña Victorina, Kapitan Tiago, Padre Salvi, no? si Pia Alba, diba? uh, at of course si Elias. Ayan. So all of these characters played an important role in projecting what Rizal wanted his readers to read, no? and that is a microcosm of the Philippine society during that time who were the stereotypical um, neighbors that you could possibly have. Okay? So, ang goal ni Rizal sa characters niya ay to find a possible neighbor that may seem to represent or may seem to um, remind you of any of the characters mentioned in the novel. Kaya hindi na nakapagtaka no, nung nakaabot ito sa knowledge ng Spanish authorities talagang nagalit agad sila no talagang this was very very offensive for them it was a huge huge problem dahil ganun nga po kalala yung nangyari okay so bilang familiar naman ng lahat sa noli no uh, isang bahagi ng module natin yung pagbibigay ng guide kung paano ba siya dapat basahin. Ano yung, ano yung magandang approach? Alright, first, do not expect its story or plot to be a head-turner. If you do, you will be bound to be disappointed. So, do not liken it to, you know, uh, commercially produce um, books, novels, stories, no? Na ang, ang goal ay uh, mang-capture ng readers, no? Uh, Noli is bigger than that. Okay? Next, do not look for fish, uh, psychologically developed characters because you're not going to see any. Um, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na totally intentional ito no, sa part ni Rizal kasi ang dami niya rin na-encounter na problems as he was writing it no, internally no, and externally. So may challenges sa family niya. Mayroon din siyang mga challenges within himself. Um ito yung time na he was still crossing the wire no kung ano nga ba talaga yung kanyang stance sa, sa mga bagay-bagay so definitely um it's undeniable that noli itself is a tamed attempt no to to show um anger or express uh, anger towards the spaniards next be on alert for social criticisms and social commentary pag sinabi natin social criticism, uh, you are explicitly criticizing the society, no? So, madali lang na mamatukoy kung may critic agad no, sa lipunan. Ang social commentary naman, on the other hand, uh, it's a criticism of society, implicit. Yan. So, meaning na implicit, hindi siya directly critical. Kumbaga, satirical yung approach. No? You're portraying 
a society to be like this in order to criticize it. Okay? Para mas malinaw yung difference ng dalawa, it's like, uh, pag sinabing social criticism, I'm attacking the community no? where I live. I attack their practice. I attack what they do. Pero pag sinabi kong social commentary, no? uh, I, I try to give my community characteristics that would make my readers dislike them. Yeah. So next, pay close attention to discussions of political or social topics. Such discussions occur between Ibarra, schoolmaster, Ibarra and Pasho, Tasho and Don Filippo, Ibarra and Elias. Yan. So kapag may, ano, no, may dialogue no, at mahaba, usually nandun yung mga main teams ni Rizal. No, yun yung mga napaglaanan niya ng panahon for conversations. Be alert on patterns, patterns of events, characters. No, uh, You can see the pattern themselves. Uh, it reveals itself eventually or they reveal themselves. Uh, being alert for passages or uh, costumbrismo. Yan. Uh, these are like um, sketches no, of uh, everyday life. And uh, they are usually depicted in ordinary settings. Yan. So, ano yung last tip? No, if you really want to understand Noli in its full embodied sense, kailangan mong maglaan talaga ng oras. No? You have to um, know exactly what Rizal wanted to um, portray. Paglaan mo ng oras yung book, huwag ka lang magbasa ng secondary sources. Do it yourself because um, you're supposed to let the novel talk to you. Okay. But... Um, one starter that could help you no, in doing that is by reading Dr. Floro Kibuyan's book, A Nation Aborted. Uh, dito, pinakita niya yung mga maling interpretation no, at ano yung mga naging consequences ng maling interpretation na to throughout the years that these incorrect interpretations were already spread like fire and uh, they're already been considered um, gospel. No? Yan. So, pag sinabi natin dichotomy, no, yung black and white, yung mga dualistic aspect. And uh, sinasabi ni Dr. Kibuye na ito yung mga maling interpretation kasi um, gumagamit tayo ng framework ng Marxism no, na hindi naman akma sa naging context nung, nung gustong ipaglaban ni Rizal or, or probably yung, yung motivation niya when he was writing Noli. Yeah. So, first dichotomy is... Rizal has always been Ibarra and Elias is Bonifacio. Correction, Bonifacio is still stranger to Rizal when he was in Spain. No, they will only meet during the meeting of La Liga, uh, La Liga uh, Filipina. And that's it. Next, being an illustrado with a bourgeois consciousness, Rizal's goal in direct contrast to Bonifacio was the assimilation of the Philippines into Spanish nation. Yan. Ito yung walang kamatayan na Rizal was for um, assimilation, Bonifacio was for separation. Again, bukod sa hindi, na si, hindi pa sila magkakilala during this time. No? Um, Rizal would not want to portray such dichotomy sa unang novel niya. Hello, first novel niya to. No? So, it would be bold to assume na yun kagad yung gusto niya na ah, ito ako, ayokong, gusto kong ihiwalay yung sarili ko sa mga separatista. Next, the reform movement only served to delay the inevitable revolution which was betrayed by characteristically opportunistic illustrados. Yan din, ganun. Parang ang ina-assume na nung mga maling interpreters na Rizal already had the knowledge that Katipunan no, specifically will be born and that uh, the propaganda movement will will delay the, the acts of Katipunan. Eh, hindi pa nga mabubuo yung katipunan nung until 1890s you know and you know uh, almost two decades yung gap when uh, uh, Rizal was writing Noli or when Rizal published Noli finally and uh, Rizal became the national hero largely through American sponsorship again it has always been the argument of pro Bonifacio people parang we can 
um, liken them to an act gay. No? Parang act gay, um, a K-pop fan na mahilig lang sa isang member. Solo stan, kumbaga. It's very wrong to look at our heroes that way. Parang you're always projecting this hero in the expense of the other. We're not supposed to do that. You're, you're supposed to look at their respective contributions and how it all came to be, no? Uh, pagdating doon sa assertion natin ng freedom. So if you want to read more, no? Uh, with the very um, scholarly and in-depth um, interpretations of Dr. Kibuyan on Noli and Elias and Ibarra, you better have this book. Yeah. So we have here um, notable parts, no? So, we have social criticisms and social commentaries. Yan. So, kayo nang bahalang umalam kung alin yung commentary and uh, criticisms. Pero, um, I have divided them separately here. Okay, first, Ibarra and Ilyas debate on the curing the social cancer. And so, they were having this debate, no, argument. Uh, paano nga ba natin gagamutin yung problema ng Pilipinas na kinoconsider natin cancer? Yan. So, uh, they were um, showing that they have different views on how to solve it, but they agree that it must be solved. Their contrasting approach seemed to fit the dichotomizing views held by earlier inter interpretation of Rizal and Bonifacio. So, itong conversation ni Elias and Ibarra, no, ang isa din sa mga madalas na ebidensya ng mga, ng mga Bonifacio supremacists to pin down Rizal. No? And again, without knowing the context behind the novel. On the other end, no, this very chapter also kind of mirrors yun na, yung, yung difference ni Rizal and Bonifacio and how they are embodied using Elias and Ibarra. No? Uh, pinaka nagpalala pa dito sa ganitong pag-associate uh, kay Elias kay Bonifacio at kay Ibarra kay Rizal ay yung kanilang background. No? Kuhang-kuha eh, di ba? Parang Ibarra, is privilege, Ibarra was privileged, Elias was not. He used to be, but uh, he he dropped them off. no He went on to fight for a bigger cause while Ibarra was still you know, trying to see the beauty in the system. So, uh, napakagandang chapter nitong chapter 49, no? Para makita natin din ano yung pinaka gustong i-elevate na idea ni Rizal sa uh, Noli Mitanghere. And again, uh, we can consider that Noli is a very tamed way para makita natin ano nga ba talaga yung stance ni Rizal. No? Kung kaya, in order for us to know how um, untamed the next novel is, no? syempre, we're going to talk about El Filibusterismo. Alright, so El Filibusterismo is the the sequel no, to No Limitang Hire. And uh, here are some information about it. No? So similar to the problems Rizal encountered in the first novel, he had more financial problems in writing the second book. Actually, he wasn't even sure if he's going to write a sequel. So uh, may, mga, ano, may mga talagang hindi siya maayos na na-execute pagdating sa Noli. No? Kasi uh, had he just a clear plan, no? To, to write a sequel, uh, definitely, baka mas napolish nyo pa yung Noli. So, kung si Viola ang uh, siyang naging savior ng Noli, no? si Valentin Ventura naman yung savior ng El Fili. And um, the first copy was published in Ghent in Belgium. Now, uh, ang focus ng El Fili ay hindi yung characters no? na focus ng Noli. El Fili is more on uh, the plot. Okay? Yung, yung plot, yung pinaka main point dito kasi gusto niyang gawing framework ito. No? Parang uh, ano yung pwedeng mangyari sa isang bansang 
unti-unti na uupos yung mga tao para mag-revolution. So that's the idea of Elfili. So uh, if you're going to read Elfili, focus more on the plot. Now, uh, yung, ano, yung second novel is more of a guideline kung ano yung mga dapat gawin ng mga Pilipino if they're trying to prepare for um, uh, the claiming of their freedom. So parang manual siya, no? And it shows how ibaga Chrysostomo, no? that the prim proper guy who studied in Europe, no? transformed into someone like Simon who is very vengeful and full of hatred. Yeah. And uh, na very ano, no? impatient no? In, when it comes to trying to achieve his goals. So, um, dito sa Elfili, no, na ipakita lalo na sa huling part, no, yung yung dialogue ni Simon with uh, Father Phil- Florentino, na yung true intention ni Rizal ay ipakita sa mga tao na aside from it, suggesting ways on how to revolt against your government, you have to also be ready for it. Okay? Be responsible for it take action and uh, that the the very motivation that you're doing it is not just for personal reasons that is one interpretation as to why at the end no simon died no? he wasn't able to fulfill what he wanted and uh, the other interpretation to that is that um, simon was supposed to die because there will be a third installment of the novel. So, trilogy dapat. No? But, unfortunately, as Rizal was trying to start writing it, no? doon nagsimula yung, yung, yung problems niya with the Spanish government at uh, nagtuloy-tuloy na yun until his execution in 1896. So, uh, what are the tips no, that we may um, give to those who want to read El Fili. Well, yun nga po, ano? again, pay close attention to the plot. It's very fundamental. So, yung, yung, yung plot, yung, yung sore, uh, source ng, ano, no, ng pagbabago ng kwento. Yan. Yung noli kasi, it's more of problem one, problem two, problem three. El Fili, we all know those problems. How do we solve it? Okay. Number two, do not expect results to transform the solutions into detailed narratives. So kahit sinabi kong manual siya no, on how to take action into something like that, it's not a manual na literal na there is this procedure, no, step by step. Okay. Nandun yung, ano eh, yung, yung theory, yung idea, what are the supposed solutions, how do we... How do we change the system? Yun yung pinoprovide. No? General idea. But you do not look for the specific details. Next, do immerse yourself in the story of Cabezang Tales, in the story of Simon's second attempt at revolution. Yan. Bakit? Kasi while Simon's first attempt at revolution and the student's Spanish Academy address, address the reader's head. These two stories address his heart and subsequently his head. They are directly related to the last chapter of the novel in which we have results taught on the redemption of the Philippine society and on the freedom and independence. So, yun, no? yung, yung attempt ni Tales at yung attempt ni Simon, yung pangalawa, okay? may analogies. No? So, magandang tingnan, especially yung mga nagbubook review ng Elifili at uh, uh, mahanap ninyo yung ano, yung sinasabi dito sa third part. Okay? Fourth, Philly is a novel of debates and discussions. Try your best to follow the argumentative chapters closely. Yan. So, nagbanggit dito ng specific chapters. So, kindly look na lang din sa module, no? Kasi naka-mention to, no? So, you have chapter 7, 33, 39, 15, 27, and 31. So, these dialogues show a lot of philosophical foundations that Rizal have learned uh, during the, the process that he was writing this. And 
malamang, mas matalino na siya dito kasi ang dami niya ng experience, ang dami niya ng exposure, dagdag mo pa yung mga problems niya. No? Um, he's more experienced and learned in, in the second novel. So Rizal was a poet before he became a novelist. So sa Philly, uh, ginamit niya ito. Uh, minsan nag, uh, nagiging figurative siya, no? pero prose yung style. So ang galing, di ba? Kaya minsan may mga ano, may mga passages doon na napaka poetic nung nung dialogue. Hindi man ito maging swak ngayon kasi hindi po ganoon yung yung patok no sa ating mga viewers, consumers, no. Um, kung magagawa din siguro itong movie halimbawa ano, dapat magaling yung yung creative writer sa sa pagcreate ng script, no. Uh, Siyempre for the storyline na din on, on how they're going to differentiate a literal statement to a figurative one. So, what is the most notable part? So again, meron din naman tayong social criticisms and social commentary. Um, yung na-feature sa ating module ay chapter 34, no? ang kasal or the wedding. Um dito pinapakita yung pagbabagong tao ni Basilio no after all of these things that have happened that has happened to him at uh, malakas dito yung class analysis yan so uh, kung kung tamed pa yung noli sa sa pagpapakita ng class differences no dito hindi na yan so malinaw din no na hindi lang inatake ni Rizal yung, yung Spanish culture no yung yung colonial culture inatake niya din yung mismong mga Pilipino who are so inferior no na they associate themselves to Spaniards just to have that sense of superiority over their fellow men can we take niya din yung napaka toxic na ugali ng mga Pilipino na they spend and they spend a lot of things pero hindi pala nila kayang i-sustain yung ganong lifestyle no and definitely uh, they all connected to that very problem of colonial mentality no yung yung inferiority to one's own um, ethnicity and um, yung superior view ng foreign uh, foreign ethnicity kaya to compensate on on what you can't control you know, you're you're doing a lot of things that uh, you're believing na will change the impression of the foreigners towards you so yeah yeah so sa mga magbo-book review ng Elfili or Noli um, you you better look at the chapters mentioned specifically this one so wrapping up no this particular part no Um, nakita natin na ang dami, ang dami palang mga dynamics na pwedeng or dapat i-consider whenever reading Rizal. No? Kahit na napaka-classic ng itong dalawang novel to. And definitely, um, iba. Iba no? yung magiging yung reading experience no? when you try to read Noli and Elfili. Since kayo ay mas mature, mas marami na kayong alam at uh, ni mga guide no, na binigay na sa inyo na isang bagay siguro, I assume, na you didn't had before when you were studying Noli in Elfili. Yan. So we're now done on our second lecture. And our next one is The Indolence of the Filipinos. Sobre la indolencia de los Filipinos. See you on the third part.